In January of 2015, I was fired from my job as fire chief of Atlanta because I expressed my faith in a book written on my own private time for a Christian men's Bible study. My name is Kelvin Cochran. When I was growing up in Shreveport, the grown-ups asked us all the time, what do you want to be when you grow up? My answers were always the same. I told them I didn't want to be poor because it seems we were always poor. I told them I wanted a family because my dad left my mother. And I told them that I wanted to be a firefighter. I was one of the first African-American firefighters in the Shreveport Fire Department. At that time, there was a designated bed for black firefighters, as well as designated forks, spoons, and plates, so no one would have to share with the black firefighters. I also faced a steady stream of racial slurs and negative attitudes because of the color of my skin. That gave me a conviction that should I ever be in a position of leadership, I would never allow someone to have the same experience of discrimination as I did as a minority. After serving as fire chief in Shreveport, I was appointed fire chief in Atlanta. Then President Obama appointed me to the highest fire official position in America, the United States Fire Administrator. I was unanimously confirmed by a bipartisan congressional committee. I served under President Obama, then was recruited back to the city of Atlanta, where I served faithfully for five years. While back in Atlanta, I was nationally recognized as Fire Chief of the Year in 2012 by Fire Chief Magazine. I appointed a diverse committee to create the Atlanta Fire Rescue Doctrine to establish a culture of justice and equity for the department. The committee was comprised of representatives from all walks of life, including those who identified as LGBTQ. The purpose of the Atlanta Fire Rescue Doctrine was to eliminate all isms, racism, sexism, favoritism, cronyism, anything that would interfere with a wholesome work environment for any people group within the fire department. However, much to my surprise in late 2014, my 34 year career came to an abrupt halt. I had written a book for a Christian men's Bible study on my own private time that encouraged men to be the best men they could be and that all things were possible through Christ. However, an Atlanta City official took issue with a few paragraphs of my book where I briefly discussed the biblical view of marriage and sexuality. The city proceeded to suspend me without pay and conducted an investigation. At the conclusion of the investigation, they concluded I had never discriminated against anyone. Despite this, the city fired me. Given my history and work, I was shocked that writing a book encouraging Christian men to be the husbands and fathers that God has called us to be would jeopardize my job. It is still unthinkable to me that the very faith and patriotism that inspired my professional achievements and drove me to treat all people with love and equity is what the government ultimately used to bring my childhood dream come true to an end. In America, True tolerance should be a two-way street. Foundational to the American dream is faith and patriotism. If you remove the faith component, it is questionable whether the American dream can be fulfilled.